Next on BYUSN, welcome to NFL Pro Day E. Which BYU player can increase their stock the most at tomorrow's Gridiron job interview? And Cam Mellick tells us which players need to have a great pro day to make it. Welcome to BYU Sports Station, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Thursday, March 23rd. I'm Spencer Linton, alongside Jerem Jordan. Great to have you with us wherever and however you have chosen to connect. Jerem, it's Pro Day Eve for the football players. How do we get involved in the Pro Day process is the question. We don't. Uh, <laughs> I eat a bunch of candy and popcorn and then show up and just Sugar talk. high. And just talk. Uh, yeah, the Underwear Olympics are tomorrow, as David Nixon calls ah, them. Yes. We preview tomorrow's Pro Day on today's show. We're, we're loaded with that. BYU's top NFL prospects in what's trending for us, uh, Cam Miller will talk about who needs to actually like run the 40 and stuff. Does Jaron Hall need to? Does Puka Nakua need to? They did not in Indianapolis. What do you think? Plus, Justin Anderson from uh, the BYU football staff will talk to us about the proceedings tomorrow. Cannot wait for that. Plus, the latest reports in Pac-12 TV land. And are we bigger Kansas State or Gonzaga fans tonight? Mm. We'll find out. Here are today's headlines. I can't wait to break six seconds tomorrow on my 40-yard dash. You going to run tomorrow? No. Oh. Some BYU football transfer portal news. Hashtag kickers are people too, even when they leave BYU. Are they? Cash Peterman announcing his intentions to enter the transfer portal. Peterman, social media sensation to a degree, was featured in seven total kickoffs last season. Good luck to Cash as he moves on. Baseball's West Coast Conference home opening series begins today against St. Mary's at 5 Eastern on BYU TV, the BYU TV app, and the BYU Radio app. Cougars coming off a season high 15 runs and a win against Utah Valley Tuesday, although as we speak outside, it is a blizzard. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly sure if this game's going to happen, but that's what we said a couple days ago, and it did, so we'll see. And if softball will be in the mix, because BYU softball slated to host Utah State today at 4 Eastern. The Cougars working for a bounce back after an 8-3 loss to the Mountain West Conference favorites, Boise State. You can watch the game live on the BYU TV app. Again, weather permitting. And as Jared mentioned, it is snowing right now in Provo. Mickey Strauss and Brad Polo are competing in the NCAA Swim and Dive Championships today in Minneapolis. Strauss will compete in the one-meter dive, and Polo, or Polo uh, will swim in the 200-meter IM. The Big 12 Conference announcing this morning a partnership with Rucker Park in New York City. This is cool. The partnership will see the conference operate youth clinics at Rucker Park. Led by Big 12 men's and women's coaches, the conference hopes to hold exhibition games there in the summer of 2024 if the NCAA approves. Another vision from Brett Yormark, who is an outside-the-box thinker. It is fun to announce it before you have the permission. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> hey, I am going, I am engaged to so-and-so. I haven't talked to the dad quite yet. <laughs> but I intend on doing this. <laughs> Laying the groundwork. <laughs> All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. The football job interview. We call it Pro Day. Jerem, BYU has a projected three NFL draft picks and a bunch of other guys that are hoping to impress somebody to get one of those priority free agent signings or just a training camp invitation of any degree. Which BYU football player can increase their stock the most during the Underwear Olympics on Pro Day? Yeah, it's probably someone off the board. Um, not Jaron Hall, Blake Freeland, Puka Nakua, although certainly they could help themselves. But those guys went to Indianapolis. They were invited to the NFL Combine. They can certainly um, help themselves some more there. Perception is that Jaron Hall's stock's going down a little bit, but I'm not so sure. Um, he's certainly got uh, some great grades uh, f among the things he's done. I am interested in seeing Jaron run the 40. I'm told he probably will participate in a lot of those physical drills that he did not participate in in Indianapolis. Perhaps that has to do with the ankle fully recovered from late November. You would um, think. You would hope and think. Uh, Puka Nakua did not participate as well outside of catching um, and Jaron Hall through. And that was it. Blake Freeland was a guy who participated uh, freely in all of those and crushed it. He was the most athletic tackle uh, by NFL.com's uh, athleticism score of 88, which was impressive. So I wonder if it's someone like a, like a Chris Brooks yeah. or a Caleb Hayes, Harris LeChance, uh, Gunnar Romney, Peyton Wilgar, kind of some of those other guys that stick out. By the way, Jake Olderoy is slated to participate as well. Mm. We'll watch kicker for the first time uh, in 
at least I can remember, and what that looks like. Um, physically, the, the, they need to see how many reps, what he can, re I, I don't know, right? It's like, how uh, far can you kick a ball? How accurate are you in actually making uh, field goals? Can you rediscover a 2020 version of Jake Oldroyd when you were a finalist and, and in the, the first, Lou Groza Award? In the first half of 2019, he starts 10 of 11. He was awesome. Uh, banging, you know, 50-plus yard field goals, which is awesome. So th there are a bunch of guys that can help themselves. I think people, I think we're going to drool over Chris Brooks. I think he's going to look the part. We call it the Jonah Trinaman Award, where it's just like, wow, yes. you look impressive. We're going to give you a shot based on physicality alone. He's going to be faster than, than people expect him to be, yes. too. Yes, and he just, he just looks uh, incredible. He looks like a superhero. So that's going to be fun. Um, but it, it probably is one of those three guys. Like, can Apukas ensure himself with some of the measurables tomorrow? Because those matter. Of course, film matters the most, like what you actually did on a football field. But then if you can back that up with measurables, now you're in business. But if your measurables can be crazy good and you had enough film, that is enough as well. In fact, it's enough, if you're crazy good, to be the fifth pick in the draft like Ziggy Ansah. I mean, he had four and a half sacks. He wasn't blowing people away on the field. But the upside of him was interesting. Now, I almost feel bad for a guy like Peyton Wilgar, who a couple years ago we thought in this moment was going to be a very high-profile guy. He comes in as a low-profile guy. So many injuries. So many injuries, right? And perhaps he can help himself tomorrow as well, at least get one of those minicamp invites, if not something better, where maybe he proves himself and he gets healthy and he yeah. has an NFL career. I, this is as compelling of a pro day as we've had in a while. Obviously, the Zach Wilson one was big time. But outside of, like, that singular bright star power, I'm excited to see the big three and mm -hmm. five to seven other guys who have a shot. Again, 2018 and 19 were a, was a special young group for BYU that won a lot of games eventually in 20 and 21 and, and 22. And now we're seeing the fruits of that here in the 23 Pro Day tomorrow. I'm going to answer this question in two categories. First, the big three that we all believe are going to be drafted, and then the rest of the guys trying to get more on the radar and to get noticed. So let's start with the big three and to understand where they are right now from an NFL draft projection standpoint. I referenced the NFL mock draft database. Blake Freeland is the clear number one star for BYU right now. He is a projected third round pick consensus overall rank of number 91 in some people still have him going late first round. So he's got a 9.1% chance, again, according to the NFL mock draft database, of going in the first round. Fun to see another three-star prospect out of high school develop and evolve at BYU. That's been BYU's calling card. Uh, yes, especially on the offensive line over the past few years. He's not bringing in five stars who then get drafted, although Kingsley Sumatia will be that guy next year. Jaron Hall is the second player we believe will be drafted. He's projected on average in the fifth round. Consensus overall rank of 157. It was as high as 95 right after the college football season ended. That has dropped now 62 spots. Just a 2.9% chance of a first round selection. Another three-star prospect out of high school. And then there's the curious case of Puka Nakua. Also projected on average in the fifth round, his overall rank is actually one spot higher than Jaron Hall. I didn't think I would ever see that. But just a 0.2% chance of going in the first round based on so many wide receivers being available. He is the four-star prospect for BYU out of high school. So of those three, when we're just saying, okay, well, who Jaron is going to make the biggest jump or who could help themselves the most tomorrow, I still think it's Jaron Hall because he was underwhelming in the senior bowl. And he didn't get to stay very long, didn't get to play in the game. His combine was okay, but he's clearly not feeling 100%. Yeah, right. So I think people want to see a more solid version of Jaron Hall and assess his health. And this will be the comfort blanket for the teams that are interested in him. Uh, a bunch of teams are going to be represented tomorrow. Tomorrow is like, ah, yes, okay, Jaron is healthy. We can move forward. We can feel good about drafting him. And so... I, I think that is a huge help for him in solidifying in several teams' minds that he's actually okay. Puka's in a little bit in the same boat, but I just feel like he's going to go later than Jaron Hall because there are more wide receiver options. I, the quarterbacks, there are only so many that are going to get drafted, 
And Jaron is clearly one of those guys, whether he's the eighth quarterback taken or the twelfth quarterback he's taken. He's sixth plus. The, the, the top five are really yeah. solid right now. He, there are just fewer quarterbacks that are NFL, you know, draft ready, and Jaron is one of those guys. So if he can just look the part tomorrow and look more healthy and more durable, that will help him a lot. I think that's the big one for the big three. Puka is so impressive, but we know who Puka is, I believe. I don't feel like – Do the scouts. Yeah, maybe not, but I think at this point they should because they saw him at the Senior Bowl and at the Combine as well. Um, I don't know how much he can help his stock, and there are going to be those that disagree with me. Run the 40 fast? That's the only way. Like, like if like Puka run is the, super fast. Run the three cone fast. Run the, run the shuttle fast, yeah. How much will that help? Will that jump him from sixth round to early fifth round? Fifth or I don't late know. fourth round? I, it, I, I'm a little weirded out, and it has everything to do with Puka's health. That he is not like fourth round type guy. Think about, think about all the BYU receivers ever. Is this guy not the most athletic receiver BYU's ever had? So it's it's a little disturbing that it's like, oh, it's, just it's a fit, durability it's, question. It's because of injury. Yes. Um, and if he doesn't hurt his ankle and then his hamstring and re-injure his ankle or whatever uh, last season, good gosh, this guy. Then this he probably guy is, is a fourth round or maybe a day two guy. Like if he runs a four five, he's why why would he not be a late day two, early day three guy? Um, and, and then he's a guy that is going to stick on an NFL roster like. Our guy Dax Milne has done a tremendous job of, of getting drafted and staying in the NFL. And, and Puka is a more athletic version of Dax, right? And, and so can BYU now put receivers in the NFL? That's been a tough thing over time. It's like, okay, we put quarterbacks. We don't put running backs. Occasionally tight ends. Offensive linemen, yes. Sometimes a defensive guy. Now it's like, okay. Can we put the most important positions in the NFL? Because that means you're recruiting at a high level. You're winning at a high level. So this is exciting that BYU has a quarterback, a tackle, and a receiver yeah. who we think will be drafted. It would be nice if Chris Brooks could get an undrafted free agent deal. It would be nice if Gunnar Romney could as well. Just, just, but You don't have to have this stuff, but once you get into a P5, you can't be acting like UConn or even like Utah State where it's like, you pin a guy occasionally in the NFL. Utah State's done a nice job the last couple of years, sometimes better than BYU. You have to be in the NFL draft game. You have to be in the produced NFL players game. BYU continues to be better at that. Oh, is he, is he so okay? We got a camera guy that just, just had, fell down right now. We just now. had somebody uh, we, we fall need down to down in studio. We need to attend to this uh, from our control room. We just had a camera guy just fall down. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to step and aside. come back with more on BYU Sports Nation right after this. Whether you want to rock your retirement on the court, on the snow, on the waves, or in the gym, at Mountain America, we're here to help you get things rolling. Learn more at macu.com slash retirement. Mountain America, guiding you forward. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. I was adopted as a baby. Love, that's the missing piece. Four teams are racing to find their family. I really love to meet my parents. It's high time that we see each other again. I'm your dad, Tommy. I'm your sister, love. Really? I just want her to know I forgive you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to an all new season of Relative Race.
Give it to Puka on fly sweep. Throws for Puka in the end zone. Oh Caught my gosh. Puka. Puka Nakua, Mango all the way! We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Joining us now, he's our inside guy when it comes to college and pro football scouting, the NFL draft, and identifying the next great NFL prospects at BYU. He is the senior director of College Football Network. Cam Meller joins us, and Cam... You've gone big time, my friend. Congrats on the big merger with Absolute Sports. Frankly, BYU fans want to know how this is going to affect content and your job and your potential impact on BYU Sports Nation in the future. It only helps. So thanks for the, uh, the mention. Obviously, it's a big deal for Pro Football Network. It's a silently very large deal for College Football Network, though, because we get to now officially focus solely on college football. So uh, 133 teams with the lofty goal of being equally covered. So that uh, might include a little partial bias to the state of Utah, most specifically <laughs> the, uh, the five letters. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good things for College Football Network. It's terrific things for me personally. I appreciate the, the mention as well. Uh, but Pro Football Network, College Football Network, Absolute Sports and Sports Kita, ultimately you know, getting better and getting bigger because of this. Fantastic stuff. Okay, Pro Day tomorrow, NFL Draft coming up in uh, about a month and a couple of days, right? Um, Jaron Hall's stock. The perception is that maybe it's falling just a little bit. Didn't participate in, in the 40 and the other drills at the Combine. Perhaps he does tomorrow. We will see. I'm told, uh, you know, he, he could. Um, what do you think of that perception? Is his stock falling? Do you feel like he's still going to be drafted? I think absolutely still drafted. Uh, I don't think that's in question at this point. I, I think the his image, I think, is falling just because there's that middle tier of quarterbacks that's sort of falling by the wayside right now. I think in the same vein, we're not hearing about Tanner McKee from Stanford. We're not hearing a whole lot about Jake Hayner from Fresno State. And right now, Jaron, Jake, and Tanner are all battling to be that sixth quarterback drafted. Uh, as we've seen now, the, the fever pitch uh, for Hendon Hooker is reaching its highest moment since his torn ACL. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah saying he's going to go in the first round now, likely. So you have five quarterbacks and all those five quarterback needy teams likely drafting in the first round. So then that really shifts that priority on where they're drafting from there. And you have to look at a team that might need a veteran or have a veteran quarterback that might need an influx of youth uh, in their quarterback room, or maybe a little question marks as a backup. So right now it looks like Jared, Jake Hayner, and ultimately Tanner McKee are, are battling it out to be the sixth, seventh, and eighth quarterbacks drafted. Uh, and where they go, it's definitely at this point – round four or beyond, but definitely day, day three for Jaron Hall right now, I think helping his stock could be a pro day performance where he runs and tests well and just overall looks healthy. Um, but again, as all these off-season events are, the interview process and who he talks to off the field would be just as important. Cam, it sounds like the range for Jaron Hall and those middle-tier quarterback guys is, as you said, fourth round, maybe to late sixth round. What can Jaron Hall do tomorrow during BYU's pro day to course correct for lack of a better phrase, and improve his stock. Show growth from the last time he talked to these same teams, personnel departments. It may not be the same people, but you bet, definitely bet they have their same notes uh, on Jaron on every player. And so if he's shown growth from what he talked to them about at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, at the Combine in Indianapolis, and if he's able to really show growth, whether it's playbook install, whether it's knowledge around the, the the game or the what they do in the NFL level and how that would translate, I think that's probably more important for him than on the field. Now, obviously, if he if he runs well, that's a, that's another thing. I think that that's more for social media. Uh, we know how fast he is, we know how athletic he is, and we know how talented his arm is. And I think it's just a matter of winning the off field battles, so to speak, or the off field conversations for for Jared to course correct himself. I think maybe a grain of salt with what the, the media might be saying nationally right now because I bet you NFL teams have not wavered too much on him. So he doesn't have to prove himself physically at BYU's Pro Day tomorrow, in your opinion? No, I, I wouldn't say so. It would be a benef benefit to everybody, uh, maybe beneficial to him to really secure himself, show he's healthy, I guess, maybe that, if that's a concern. But obviously they, they go through the medical rigmarole at, in Indianapolis. So if he passed through medicals, then he's perfectly fine on uh, these NFL team sports. Cam Meller is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's talk about the other two BYU prospects that we anticipate will be drafted, beginning with Blake Freeland. 
We've seen his stock fall as well, looking at Mel Kuyper specifically, who is one of the louder voices in the NFL draft preparation. Where do you see Blake Freeland after a ridiculous NFL combine in some respects, yet he's still receiving some significant criticisms and seems to be settling in late second, early third round? Where do you have him right now? That's where he is right now for me. And uh, honestly, I don't think it's really changed. Uh, I think he's corrected himself, if we, to use your, to use Jeremy's expression, course correct. He corrected himself after what I would call a mediocre or below average senior bowl performance. We saw some discrepancies in his game. He's, we know he's athletic. He, you're not a former quarterback and, and not going to be an athletic dude uh, at his size as well. But the one thing that he showcased at the senior bowl was he got a little bit out of balance quickly. And some of the, some of the speed rushers were able to get by him pretty quickly in those one-on-one -on -one situations because he stood up too quick. And so I think that's coaching. That's coachable. And I think if you look at it, that might have hurt his he was he went viral at the combine for his ability. He went viral at the at the senior bowl for his how he lost some of those battles. Uh, and so I think coaches look at that and you look at what uh, what translates over well, what's coachable and, and how he lost in those battles at the combine. Uh, that's coachable. So sink him down a little bit, lower his hips, uh, use his strength and his athleticism to his advantage. And he's absolutely a day day two uh, middle of round two guy for me, if not the early stages of round two. Okay, we know you love Puka Nakua. We all do around here, of course. Where do you see him at this point, about a month away from the draft? You know, the team's going to take a flyer on him. Uh, he is a flyer himself, right? And so Puka, to me, is athletic as they come. Honestly, has a, probably an underappreciated route tree that he can run. But ultimately, I don't have to tell BYU fans that were in the end zone during some of his immaculate receptions. But he's got crazy, awesome contested catch ability. So... To me, he's a guy who fits in perfectly as a wide receiver three, wide receiver four in an NFL system. And, you know, gone are the days where a wide receiver three or four only sees, you know, 20 targets a year. These guys are 50, 60 target guys a year. So to me, the, the ceiling for Puka is the, the early stages of day three for a team that's fallen in love with his athletic ability and the receiving traits that he does possess. Uh, more realistic, probably round six, round seven for him, but absolutely a team with, with a need or, or depth at the wide receiver position should be looking at Puka Nakua. Is Puka Nakua the guy that can improve his stock the most tomorrow during BYU's Pro Day? And if it's not him, who is it? It's absolutely Puka, right? So showcase he's healthy, showcase he can run, really put on display his, not just the 40, not just straight line speed. That's good. But honestly, it's the 10-yard split. It's the 20-yard in between the 40. And then ultimately, it's the short area drills and then him running routes. If he can showcase the full route tree, his hands are not going to be in question. It's the health. It's the longevity of his career. And it's ultimately how quickly he can win off the line of scrimmage. And I think we know Puka does that well. He's a weapon when he's got the ball in his hands. And so short area quickness drills and him showcasing he can get open will vault his stock, not just by the NFL draft teams or the boards, uh, but also fans and media as well. So unlike Jaron, he may need to prove himself physically tomorrow. A little bit, I, I think, because of how many games he had missed in his career uh, and how long his career spanned and where, you know, Jaron didn't have that question. He played under Zach. He learned under Zach, and there he was, uh, Puka with the transfer, figuring out where he where he sort of aligns and, and how healthy he is and, and how mature he is, I don't think will be a question, but ultimately proving himself or durability uh, and, and just overall from when they saw him at the Combine to when they've seen him now or at the at Senior Bowl uh, to where he is now. We discussed yesterday the likes of Kingsley Suomataia, Keaton Slovis, and Isaac Rex, among a few others, when we were talking about the best potential NFL prospects for BYU next year. Kingsley feels like the sure thing top NFL prospect for BYU, Cam. I I'm assuming you agree with that. If he is number one, who's number two in that conversation? Kingsley is number one right now. He's on the early watch list for 2024's top offensive line. Um, it's we have our we have our options that we know, uh, but Kingsley's up there on that fringe level where you want to watch him. And if he shows the growth that we all think you, there's the traits he has and the athletic ability and the strength that if he can showcase that again and ascend, you know, he's a guy who is early, early draft consideration for 2024. And then the next I, I hate to go chalk, but let's face it. There was a time that Keaton Slovis was widely seen as a potential number one overall pick. Wow. That ability is still there. I, there, you don't. It doesn't just leave. I, I know the pit offense did not do him any favors, and he's sort of bounced around, and he's not elevated talent that is pretty awesome around him. Uh, looking right at those USC receivers he had, uh, it's there's still the talent and the processing ability that Keaton Slovis has. 
And if he can sort of get back to where he was in those early stages of his freshman year, sophomore year at USC, absolutely Keaton is a guy who becomes number two, if not number one. Hey, that'd be great because you got to have great quarterback play in 2023 and BYU's in the Big 12 and this dude's been in the fight before. Okay, when it comes to the other guys uh, with BYU's pro prospects outside of the big three that we discussed, is there a guy that sticks out as the next best prospect who could sneak into the draft or perhaps uh, among several hopefully undrafted free agent types? You know, to me, I have a few undrafted, we call them priority free agents, and it's all the offensive linemen, whether it's, to, to me, I've spoken to a few people and they just look at it as, hey, I'm going to draft, I'm going to draft or I'm not going to, if I don't draft, I'm going to sign uh, one of these BYU guys. It stems from the, the previous regime um, and, and how well they've been coached. I know it's sort of a broad scoping way of looking at it, but that's how they do it, right? They, they look at where these guys have been and, and who they've been coached by and how they can get there. So uh, it's probably a priority for agent. I would say we're stuck with three drafted BYU players right now at this point, uh, but priority free agents on the offensive line coming come this uh, very quickly. You know, those guys that get announced very quickly after round seven's over, those are, that's going to be right here for BYU. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you about two guys specifically. Um, we, we know you love Peyton Wilgar. And in fact, I'm going to throw in a third name. There's Chris Brooks, the BYU running back, who is a transfer as well, and then a guy like Gunnar Romney. Where do guys like Peyton Wilgar, Chris Brooks, and Gunnar Romney fit into the conversation of pro football and their futures? Chris Brooks had to have sort of a Zach Charbonnet career uh, from UCLA. They're upright runners with a little bit of speed that is sort of deceptive. I think Brooks, and he's a guy maybe if the running, if this was a few years back uh, with, with his running style and his athleticism and ultimately the durability that he might possess at the NFL level is a guy, he's a, you know, an early down runner in the NFL. If he gets a good situation as one of his, I think it'll be a priority free agent as well. Uh, if you get him a good situation, he could see early success. Uh, Gunnar Romney needs some help and needs a good situation as well. I think to me, there's limits and limitations to his full route tree in the NFL. Um, and the speed is great. We know Gunnar's fast, but it's ultimately not going to be maybe fast enough for the NFL. So how he won in college with BYU was, you know, the speed and then dominating at the catch point it might not be good enough in the NFL with the new age quarterbacks. And then Wilgar as well. You know, I love Peyton to death. I love, I love his story. I love his family. Uh, and ultimately I think the injury concerns and the longevity of a guy who does his best in coverage, you know, it's, he needs to do all three facets from the linebacking skill set to, to really see the, enough snaps to to have his potential shown in the NFL. He's got his work cut out for him, unfortunately. Great stuff from the senior director of College Football Network, Cam Meller, a longtime friend of the program. Cam, congratulations again on the promotion. Yeah, baby. Just save time for us when you get a little busier, okay? Trust me, I'm still drinking the Kool-Aid, as they say. So I'm not going anywhere, guys. Don't worry. I nice love it. Look at that water bottle. We no, love product it. Product placement at its finest, guys. I promise. I'm not going anywhere. Cam, great to talk to you. Thanks, man. A pleasure, guys. Thanks as always. All right. Puka Nakua is the guy who we, can improve his stock the most tomorrow. We had questions about um, this that we were talking earlier about. Yeah, who needs to do what tomorrow? Um, and he doesn't think Jaron Hall needs to run the 40 and prove himself physically. That's interesting. Just kind of re-catch up, right, um, in the sort of installation of playbooks and, and mental side. Like, Jaron has it all. It's just whether someone's going to pick him and win, right? And, uh, yeah, we certainly hope and expect him to be drafted. There's... This narrative that we've talked about, and maybe he's fallen. For a, a couple of people, all Texas won. You know, one team to be like, one team's gotta we love see you. you as our backup. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it's a competitive good team where he can learn behind a veteran. Somebody is going to love Jaron, yes, for his physical abilities, but the mental aspect and his maturity is going to just yeah. sway a few teams where they're like, we want that dude as a backup. We're going to take him late fifth round. He's our He's guy. all business. Yes. He's already a dad. Yeah. Like, this dude has a great head on his shoulders, not to mention incredible athleticism, amazing play on the field, takes care of the ball. Like, what's not to love about Jaron Hall? Let's go. And you can watch Jaron Hall, Blake Freeland, Puka Nakua, Chris Brooks, Gunnar Romney, Peyton Wilgar, Jake Oldroyd, mm -hmm. all of them tomorrow, 12 to 2 Eastern on BYU Sports Nation, live from the indoor practice facility at Pro Day on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Up next, is the perceived obsession with the Pac-12 unhealthy for BYU fans and, frankly, for those that support the Big 12? <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation.
official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Mark? Some of my favorite moments are hearing from the family room, just a chorus of laughter. Twist your mothers. BYU TV has been an escape and a refuge for me. We forgot about random acts. We love that one. Today, we wanted to do something nice for you. I see that change on him after that show. It just brightened everybody's day. I can do this. I want to live my life in a way that that show showed me. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Uh, follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. want to update you. Uh, we had something a little bit scary happen earlier in the show where one of our cameramen uh, kind of slumped over. He's fainted, but we're happy to report he is doing well and resting, and he's going to be totally okay. That's the first in the show of almost 2,500 yeah. episodes. And, and luckily he fainted, nothing worse, right? Um, yeah. But he's, he's okay resting in uh, one of the break rooms, and uh, we got him some water, and he's sitting down, so he's doing okay. Get yeah. that man I, a chocolate bar and a nap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. It's time to whip it. The Cougar Whip Wrap presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Mass Saint Collective, affiliated with Kansas Jayhawks, posted a photo of the entrance to the football offices featuring the logos of the new Big 12. What's one word that describes how you feel seeing that? It's just another notch in the belt of, ah, it really is happening that BYU is going to the Big 12. That's not one word. The, the low... <laughs> Okay. Are there a bunch um, of dashes in there? Validating. Well, How about that? I like that. I like validating. That. I mean, it's glassy. Uh, I like that uh, entrance. It looks nice, man. All right. Which brings us to the countdown. Hit it. Countdown to the Big 12. 100 days. 100. Just a 100 nice. 100 nice days away. Hundy. Keep from it July up, 1st. And temperatures that are above 35 degrees. That day, baseball and softball <laughs> could play if they wanted. It's going to be adventurous today. Let's stay with the Big 12 theme. Conference is partnering with Rucker Park to launch a series of youth clinics featuring conference head coaches this summer and hopes to hold exhibition games at some point there in the summer for men's and women's basketball. Jerem, is this better for the conference and BYU in exposure and recruiting somehow? I'm not sure how it affects recruiting, but it's a cool event that gets the Big 12 which is perceived as being like on the plains, right? It's much more than that. Um, in Rucker Park, which is uh, the most famous outdoor basketball venue in the world uh, in New York City, which is exciting. So that's super cool. I think that's very fun. I've never connected Big 12 and street ball before, but here we are. I just like fresh ideas, and Brett Yormark has them. This is totally driven by him. He ran Jay-Z's entertainment business based in Brooklyn. He knows all about New York City. It's his idea and his vision to have the Big 12 football pro day that's now going to happen. I love it. I just, I can't wait to see what he tries next. It's bigger than the so-called truck stops, right, that uh, people like to make fun of the Big 12 with. No, no, no. It's, it's expanding. And Yormark certainly doesn't come from this space. He's opening it into the spaces he's been in. Say what cool. you will about some of the cities in the Big 12. 
because the universities in each of those respective cities are so built around the schools and the athletic programs, rabid fan bases, full stadiums, it's college football in the Midwest and in the South. Let's go, man. Yeah. Yesterday, multiple reporters said the Pac-12 presidents received a, quote, positive update on the new media deal. BYU and other Big 12 fan bases reacted as you would expect. Is the obsession with the Pac-12 media deal or lack thereof an unhealthy one for BYU fans? I don't think it's unhealthy. I just think it's distracting. But sometimes it's a funny distraction. And it, it gives BYU fans and, frankly, Big 12 fans, several Big 12 schools are just as involved as BYU is in this whole Pac-12 hole of blue. It's, it's kind of just a funny distraction. But don't let it distract from the fact that you know, actual games and a deal has been done in the Big 12, like let the Pac-12 figure their thing out if it, if it, it gets figured out at all, whatever. When, I, is, it, when is the Big 12 going to announce that deal, by the way? It's just the Pac-12? The Big 12. They oh. haven't actually announced that deal, right? Well, it's, it's become been like... Report. It's, it's just understood. It, it's happened. It's been so... It's become so yeah. common. It hasn't it's been such common knowledge. The league do, hasn't said this is officially Do they deal. need to announce it? Do they ever, yeah, do they ever need to? Listen, we're as guilty as anybody. We talk about this almost every day on the show. It is It is a fun thing. It's a conference. It's a funny distraction. We're now in a conference, so we're like, yeah, yeah, us, them. We're excited about like belonging to something bigger than... Uh, you know, independence, which is exciting. Frankly, the Pac-12 could get a deal that offers more money per team, but it depends a lot on where you are. If people have a hard time finding it, is it worth it to get more money? That's a conversation for another yeah. day. No, no, that's an opinion I've shared. Is you could you could have more money, but you lose if you're not with ESPN and Fox. Like either way, the Big 12 has won this battle. Sweet 16 games tonight on CBS, and we are watching. Kansas State out of the Big 12 take on the pride of the West Coast Conference, Gonzaga, and future Big 12 member in Gonzaga. Are you more of a fan of Kansas State or Gonzaga tonight? I have Gonzaga in the title game, so uh, probably Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Yeah. I want Gonzaga to win so that they can play UCLA and destroy UCLA. Like, please, Gonzaga. Again, a Pac-12 angle. Frankly, if Kansas State wins, awesome. I will just be rooting against UCLA because UCLA is probably going to win tonight and get to the Elite Eight. So whoever wins out of this game, just beat UCLA. <laughs> Yesterday, Solche Mayava posted pictures on his Instagram celebrating his birthday with a caption saying, switched positions, but I ain't switched teams. To which his teammates responded hilariously. Lopini Katoa. Was the caption directed towards Clark and Campbell Barrington? Sorry. Clark Barrington, not. It was directed to Jacob Conover, Jackson Kufusi, or maybe Knoxville guy <laughs> Keenan Peely, Blake Freeland. It was probably for Dallin Holker. Dallin Holker, couldn't be for me, probably for Logan Fano. Logan Fano, <laughs> if it's not for me, it's got to be Tate Romney. Has Tate Romney responded this yet? This is amazing. Was this targeting by Sol J or unsportsmanlike conduct by Lopini? I don't think Sol J <laughs> had any intention of this happening. I love this so much. I think this is very funny from Lopini Katoa. <laughs> I'm not going to give him unsportsmanlike conduct. He might get a five-yard penalty, uh, but a worthy five-yard penalty. Sometimes I, those five-yard penalties are worth it. I give him a touchdown. I, this is fantastic. I love that dudes that transferred are pointing to other dudes that transferred. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. It's a great. It's great. Well, I love. I love the collective senses of humor of well all done. of these guys. You can go back and read all the yeah. comments on that. It's pretty funny. Super we just, fun. We just grabbed some of them, but. Baseball, in theory, returns to West Coast Conference play today as they host St. Mary's, 5 Eastern on the BYU TV app, BYU TV, and the BYU radio app as well. Again, we're hoping these games get yeah. in with the weather. Yes, and reminder, answer our question of the day, which BYU player can improve their stock the most at tomorrow's Pro Day. We'll get to some of those responses coming up. Up next, what can you expect to see at tomorrow's BYU Football Pro Day? The director of player personnel, Justin Anderson, joins us with all the answers, or at least some of them. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner.
they prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. I came from literally a broken home. That was the day I met Metro Man. And our rivalry was born. I'm, I'm done. Wait, what? How did you do this? You left us in the hands of him. No offense. No, I'm with you. Megamind, the city needs you. I'm the bad guy. I don't save the day. And I don't get the girl. Let's just have fun with this. Come on. BYU Sports Nation, we are live in Studio B. We have moved over to the other side of the studio for our next conversation. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. We now welcome in the BYU Football Director of Player Personnel. His name is Justin Anderson. Justin, welcome to the show. Oh, Great Justin, to have you, you back on. It's awesome to be here. And I want to rewind to uh, a national anthem moment featuring your daughter at a BYU <laughs> basketball game uh, a month ago yeah. to start this conversation. When did you develop the uh, American Idol in the Anderson home? Because she's unbelievable. Uh, honestly, it's I, I have no idea. She was she's been doing it since she was little. Self-taught, really. Everything. Singing anthems. Singing. Or singing generally. Playing music, learning music, writing her own songs. Yeah, she just she has it. Is she awesome. going to take care of you when you get older? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no. Every no. parent's dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. Okay, well, you oversee uh, the Pro Day tomorrow from the BYU standpoint. Yeah. What goes into this event? Because we are told from, you know, a bunch of scouts say that, hey, this is one of the best, if not the best in the country. Yeah, you know, there's just a lot of organizations. So really here, everyone does such a great job. There's so many people involved from grounds crew to marketing to um, people within the football department to equipment. It, they just do such a great job. It's all the little details from parking spaces to, you know, making sure that check-ins where everyone needs to be and player check-in, scout check-in, family check-in. So there's just a lot of different things that kind of go into that stuff, but it's awesome. Wow, a lot of details for sure. Yeah. So when the actual pro day begins, who's running the show and deciding the order of the drills and all of that? Yeah, so typically I'll be in contact with one of the scouts that's going to direct kind of the pro day. Um, he'll kind of, we've kind of laid out a schedule, but they, sometimes there's changes. They'll get there and say, hey, we're going to change to this or that. Uh, but they kind of have an idea based on other pro days they've been at, how they want it to run and smooth, how they, how they want it to work. And so, yeah, we put it together and he'll run it. Once that happens, once they get there, it's their show. Who's running it this year? Uh, right now it looks like the Broncos will probably be Broncos guy from the Broncos will be kind of direct, and he's done it, I think, the last couple of years. So. And how many teams will be there represented? Right now, all 32 teams will be Fantastic. there. Fantastic. Yeah. That's always the goal, wow. right? Yeah. Get everybody there. That's awesome. All yep. 32 teams. Yep. Uh, earlier, we were talking about uh, just, again, the atmosphere, the pressure that's involved there. What's the advice that's given to players that are going to participate in a pro day, and, and how do you prepare for something like this? Because it is a very, very pressure-packed job interview. Yeah, you know, I think these guys have been training and preparing for it the last few months. Um, you know, I think the advice that they're probably given from the people they train with to myself is just go, go, go be your best. Like, let it all hang out. You have nothing to lose at this point, right? And I think when you do that, like in anything, when, there's, when you put pressure on yourself, you tend to tense up and don't perform your best. It's the guys that can stay relaxed in those moments 
that are the ones that typically really stand out and, and make a name for themselves. So, I, you know, that's the advice. Go, go have fun. You get a chance to be in front of your family and your teammates one last time, and just just go let it be, just go let it hang out, you know. With fewer clothes on than normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Puka Nakua seems to fit that whole mantra perfectly, right? A guy that has He's fun and this. can relax. Yes. He yes. really does. It's you know, it's one of the things I really respect about being around him is is he just he he loves the game and he 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 is fun to be around. Like he loves ball, and I don't think he really feels the pressure of. And you see it, like Boise State moment, you know, and between him and Jaron, that's that catch. I mean, we're all over there going, <laughs> and it's, for him, it's just another play. I love it. Okay, it's a really exciting pro day because there's a lot of prospects, notably three that we've highlighted, in, yeah. uh, you know, a, a lot, Jaron Hall and Pukunuku and Blake Freeland. The opportunity for three drafted guys is very exciting. What, what are you hoping for uh, with these three? And, and we were kind of talking about, like, who n maybe needs to do what. It'd be great if Jaron and Puka could do some more of the measurables, perhaps. Um, what do you expect tomorrow from these guys? Yeah, I, I really think they'll perform well. I mean, I think um, they're prepared for this. I think I really do. You know, I believe in these guys, and I think um, they'll have a chance tomorrow to kind of show for themselves and for the, the scouts that they're ready. And there is a lot of interest. Obviously, all 32 teams, some teams will have multiple representatives there. So I think um, there's interest in our guys, and I think our guys are going to do really well. And then that other group, um, that there are some other really notable opportunities uh, sure. with and, and Chris Brooks and uh, Gunnar Romney and Harrisville Chance and Caleb Hayes and so on. There, there are others. That's a good group, too. There could be a nice crop of uh, undrafted free agents or priority signings, as they say. Absolutely. And, you know, the great thing is, is if you ever have one player that's getting a lot of attention, if you're those other guys, I, I think that's amazing because now you have this opportunity in front of all these teams to kind of show what you can do as well. So I think there's going to be a lot of eyes. Um, there was a lot of interest over, over the season as you met with scouts. So I think our guys are going to do well, and I think there's going to be some, some really good things happen for some of these guys because of this opportunity. Will you give us a sense of what that's like in season and in spring ball too, by the way? Because we, we kind of say, hey, it's pro day, and they all show up. Well, there are scouts who show up to practices during the season. So give us a sense of sort of the dialogue from NFL scouts with current players outside of pro day. Yeah, I think really it's, it's um, in the season for me, it's, they're going to meet with myself, the coaches. They're going to ask questions, character to how do they learn, to, to different things like that. And so they're doing their research. These guys are not just showing up. Th these guys have researched these guys for over a year. Um, they've had lists of names. You know, they're already starting to collect names for next year's group. And, um, you know, they're ahead of the schedule. They're scouts that have different responsibilities. And so it really is a process for them of gathering information and getting to know the guys on deeper levels and just obviously how they perform. That's part of it, a big part of it, but the other stuff is really important mm -hmm. too. BYU Football Director of Player Personnel Justin Anderson joins us on BYU Sports Nation. I'm going to ask you to put on your big opinion hat here. Oh, boy. Because we were just talking about the guy who we believe can help themselves the most tomorrow during Pro Day. And we can focus in on the big three. I kind of feel like Blake Freeland is what he is because he showed out at the Combine and people know him well. Jaron Hall and Puka Nakua seem to have a little bit more of an erratic range when it comes to, you know, where they could potentially be drafted. So of the big three, which guy do you feel like can help themselves the most tomorrow at the pro day? Oh, if I have to pick, do I have to pick one? You got to pick one, Justin. Um, I actually think, and maybe it's just because I was a receiver, I, I think Puka has a lot to, to show. And... Um, He's obviously done a lot of really good things in games and shown that, but I always just think testing and showing some of those other measurables as a receiver, I think those make a big difference. I don't know how much of a difference that makes in a quarterback. I think it helps, but I think for a skill guy, there is a lot, a lot placed on the measurables. Are these drills being done with current players leading up to that uh, you know, pro day that year once they're done? Is that like, are you, I, I think you guys are, right? You take 40s and do you do three cone and 20? Yeah, I mean, our guys, so that? yeah, I think most colleges are going to train these guys in a lot of that, but I don't think you dive into it, right? Not hard, just it's, a little bit? Yeah, these guys, as soon as their season's done, they decide this is something they're going to do. They're going to go find someone they're going to train, and that's where they're going to really yeah. hone in on how do you run the three cone drill, how do you run the short shuttle, what are some advantages in the 40, and the different things to prepare specifically for the combine, because there is a lot of, 
you know, eyes and stock taken into some of those measurables. So it, Because it is interesting. It's not your job to get them drafted, but kind of. It's, it's your job to win games first and develop individuals to prepare them for that opportunity. So it's kind of, you kind of hand them off, I guess, yeah. at that point maybe. Yeah, and, you know, I think, you know, I tell the guys, really, my job is to help promote our, our players. And for me, it's easy. We have amazing kids. We, I think BYU's showing the kind of guys that have made it in the NFL. They're having success. And so for me, it's easy. I just want to make sure I provide an opportunity yeah. for all these guys to get that, that chance. And really, I'm just a, a, a mediator to help provide some information. All right, let's finish with some clarification on the 40-yard dash, which is always the most watched, most anticipated event for all these guys. Yeah. And there are unofficial and then official times. So how does that work at BYU's Pro Day specifically? Are, are they hand-timed unofficial and then it's confirmed by laser? How does that work in, in yeah, regard to BYU? Uh, I think most places outside of the combine, it's, it's hand-timed. So they're going to take the average or there's going to be one scout that's going to give the time. And that, that's when the one will be considered the, the official time. There's probably some people timing on their own. Mm -hmm. That gives the unofficial time. And then someone will give them, hey, here's the time that we're going we're gonna to use as the official time. That's why I go with my unofficial 516. Yeah, you didn't, trust, you didn't trust the timers we used. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. No, no, no. I'm going with, I'm going with the unofficial 516. Whatever is convenient. You know. <laughs> Whatever's faster. Right? That's, yeah, whatever's That's faster. exactly right. Justin, thanks for hanging out with us. Absolutely. We look forward to a, a really fun program yeah, tomorrow. It's going awesome. to be awesome. I'm excited. Thanks, guys. Okay, coming up uh, later today, uh, softball hosts in-state rival Utah State coming up before Eastern time on the BYU TV app. Again, we hope. The snow needs to go away. Go, go away. Well, we need the moisture. They've been praying <laughs> for it. <laughs> the Great Salt Lake's risen two feet. That's good enough. It's two feet. <laughs> up next, a rise and shout out to Miked Up Access and more of your social media responses to our question of the day. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. I was adopted as a baby. Love, that's the missing piece. Four teams are racing to find their family. I really love to meet my parents. It's high time that we see each other again. I'm your dad, Tommy. I'm your sister, love. Really? I just want her to know I forgive you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to an all new season of Relative Race. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps. And we've got a podcast as well. Subscribe right in. Our question of the day, which BYU player can improve their NFL draft stock the most? at tomorrow's Pro Day festivities. At LJ Pearson, 1K answers on Twitter. Dark horse, Gunnar Romney. Mm. Fell off the radar this past year due to injury, but is an amazing wide receiver. Go Gunner. 
He's going to he's going to win the looks the part award along with Chris Brooks tomorrow. Yeah, I think he absolutely could. Gunner looks like a machine. Gunner's got great skills. Um, I would love for Gunner to get a, an undrafted free agent opportunity. That'd be great. Jordan Royal on Twitter says, other than Puka Nakua and Jaron Hall, I think Harris Lachance can surprise some people. Amen. Cam Miller alluded to that on the yeah. offensive line. Yeah. Continuing, he's just as a, a freak. He's just a freak athlete, but did have some injuries in seasons past that probably kept him from receiving a combine invite. Chris Brooks can also put up some numbers that could impress. Love that. Yes, Chris Harris. Um, these are integral pieces of really successful, uh, you know, BYU teams. Harris, the last couple of years, perhaps the most underrated uh, receiver, or excuse me, lineman. He's he he can play guard at the next level. Like I'm excited about Harris's chance here. Ben Peterson on Twitter answers, I think it'll be Puka. He has some great film, but did have stretches of time he was out this season. The scouts will be impressed when they see him in person. He, he is just so athletic. Like I, <laughs> I, 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 He's the most athletic receiver BYU has ever had. If he played three full seasons here, I think we'd talk about him in the same breath as Austin Collar. I just... Having Puka here was so awesome. He special, had so special many good player. plays. It just hurts that he got hurt yes. in certain moments that prevented him from being like a third-round guy. Yeah. Like he is as good of a BYU receiver as BYU's ever had. Think about what he did in limited time. In yeah. limited time. He had a few just unbelievable moments. Okay, our Elite Voice of the Day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes from Matt Brown on Instagram. Puka Nakua, mm. in person, he's just different. I think that someone is going to fall in love with his athleticism and take him a round or two earlier than he is currently projected. I would love for him to sneak into the fourth round. I just think that'd be amazing. Right now, late Probably fifth, early feels, sixth. Feels like a fifth round plus guy. Yeah. Today's Rise and Shoutout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We're giving it to BYU Football Social Media and Jay Hill specifically for mic'd up access with defensive coordinator Jay Hill. Listen to this. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let it rip today, let it rip today. You had that good practice, got to back it up. Back it up with another one. I like you. Yeah, it's going to get harder. Yeah, but that's well. all right. This defense will be the best thing for you, I promise. No, I, I, ball, Eddie, ball! Nice. Stay up, stay up, keep him up. Good battle. You're, you're good enough now, and you've been doing this long enough. You dictate to him what you want him to see. Look good today. I like your one-on-one -on -one reps, both of them. We will never back down. Coaches, I promise you, will never back down. Players, don't back down. If you care about playing, you'll keep studying. If you don't, guys will pass you up. Okay, if you care, keep studying. Okay, the chance for us to be super good is right in front of us. We just got to take it. Make sense? Okay, this team's got a chance to be really good, do everything right. Okay? Uh, are we all in on Jay Hill? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need that video. Uh, to be all in on Jay Hill. Thanks to today's yeah. guests, Cam Miller and That'd Justin Anderson. Sorry, Dennis, ran out of time. For Jerem, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Aaron Francisco. We'll see you this afternoon for BYU softball and baseball, we think, on the BYU TV app. <laughs> Go Coops!